Warning, this video is created by an artist, not a craftsman. For this reason, you might hear phrases such as just eyeball it, wing it, don't worry, the texture will hide that, and other phrases commonly associated with art yarn. If you are a perfectionist with a sensitive gag reflex, you may want to turn your volume down. The right corner, you want to make a loop with your yarn and put the loop around the peg to the left of the corner peg. Then you're going to bring your yarn all the way up to the top corner, taking it over the top of the peg to the left of that corner peg. Then bring it over the top of the corresponding peg on the right side. Then bring it back up over the top of the left side peg that you've already come around. As you bring your yarn down, make sure your tail comes to the left side of the peg. Then bring your yarn around the right side of the original peg and up the left side of the peg to the left. As I bring my yarn up to the top, I'm skipping a peg because my yarn is bulky and textured and because my loom is snaggle toothed. If this isn't the case for you, then there's no need to skip a peg. Just wrap your yarn over the top, then bring it under the row you've already created and loop it over the top of the corresponding peg on the right side. Bring it back under the row already created and back up over the top of the left side peg that you've already come around. As you bring your yarn down, you're going to take it to the right side of the peg you last came around. In my case, I'm taking it over two because I'm skipping rows. If you're not skipping rows, just take it over one. Now bring your yarn up to the left of the last peg you went around on the hypotenuse side. That's the left side. Bring it under and then over the rows you've already made. Wrap it over the top of the corresponding peg on the right and over and under once more. Keep in mind as you're weaving over and under from peg to peg, that each row is made up of two strands of yarn. So you want to make sure that you're going over and under both strands as though they're one. On the bottom side as you bring your yarn down, each time you bring it down you're going around the peg you've already come around before bringing it around the next peg. So they're overlapping in a pattern. So because I'm skipping pegs, I'm bringing it over here and going over here one. This is where that eyeball it part comes in. But if you're not skipping pegs, and you're doing everything evenly on a loom that is not snaggle tooth. you would just bring it to the last one that you went around and move it on to the next one. Okay? And when you bring it back down, you would go on to that last one and bring it to the next one. Bring it down to the last peg and on to the last one. I hope that makes sense. So again, because I am skipping pegs, I'm going to do it this way. Instead of coming on this one, I'm going to the center one. Okay. 
And so that all has to do with the, the weight of yarn you're using, um, how balanced your loom is, all of that stuff. So this is where that kind of intuitive eyeball it stuff comes in. But if you're doing it completely even, then you would just go up and bring it back down to the last peg you were on, move to the next one, up, bring it to the last peg, and the next one. All right. Now I'm going to demonstrate how I change color. Um, there's only one edge that you can change color on because you're dealing with loops on the other two edges. So trim your yarn about six inches below your pegs. All right, making sure we're going around the correct peg. I use a weaver's knot to tie my new colors on. And I do this so that I can trim the excess as close to the knot as possible. And then there's nothing to see um, along that edge. Okay. You want to make sure that you don't tie your knot down here. Your new color will start all the way up there. So you want to try to get it as close to where the peg is going to meet the edge. I mean, where the yarn is going to meet the edge peg as possible. At this point, as my weaving gets wider, I'll begin using this Tunisian crochet hook. I got this at Hobby Lobby. It has a hook at each end and it's a little over a foot long. It'll allow me to get that over under over under motion across larger sections of the weaving. So this is our very last row. Um, we've got our seven rows of pink that we started with over here. And so we want to match, just so that this stays proportional, match seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay, and seven. So now I'm about to make my last pass. And I know it sounds weird because we did seven up there. So now as I go through again, you're thinking like, oh, but there's now there's going to be eight rows. Um, when we finish off the right side over here, we're going to be running another row of pink, so it's going to balance out. Um, we're doing this last row a little bit differently. I'm taking my yarn, 
and I just want to measure all the way along the bottom of about six or seven inches past the end over here. I'm going to cut my yarn so I just have this one string. Okay, I'm going to thread my needle to finish off this last row. All right, so the plastic tapestry needle flexes quite a bit. It'll really allow you to get into each of these rows going over, under, over, under. Being sure to keep your rows separated. It's going to get harder to do as we're closer to these pegs. stitched it along this edge and now I'm coming to the last over under to, to finish off this edge you just pull it oops and leave it hanging and again we'll trim all that when we're done I'm going to demonstrate how to finish off this right side edge um, you'll notice that along the hypotenuse the long edge Everything's woven in and caught. And same thing along that bottom edge that we just finished. Everything's woven in with that last strand so that when you pull it off the pegs, that edge doesn't go anywhere. But if you've ever tried without understanding how to finish this method to undo this right side, you'll notice it all just comes undone. And that's because there's nothing woven in and out over here. So I'm gonna attempt without standing in front of the camera to show you how to finish this edge. All right, so I'm taking my pink yarn and I'm measuring out the length of this long edge and I want it to extend about six inches from the top and six inches from the bottom. And again, we're gonna use our plastic tapestry needle for this part. Threading my needle. Okay, I'm gonna come around to this side. Hopefully I can do it without blocking way. So each, you'll see where it's wrapped around each peg, right? If you pull it off those pegs, it's going to come completely undone. So we've got to take our tapestry needle and at each loop around the peg, we're going to go in that loop, okay? So it's like we're going over under each strand, so not over each loop, each strand. So I'm going inside the loop, so it's under that first strand over that second, coming in to that second loop from behind. So I'm just going to be taking my tapestry needle and going into each loop from behind, okay? So we're going each loop from behind, and what that's doing is creating an over-under pattern for each strand. Again, not each loop, each strand. So just enter each loop from behind. Again, with the pegs and the tightness of the weave, it can be a little tough, just take your time. That's why I use the plastic tapestry needle. You just wanna make sure as you're working it, you don't pop the unwoven loops off of their pegs. It's okay to muscle it around a little bit too because we're gonna be fulling it and things will balance out and adjust when we do that. Again, I want to let you see me struggle with it so you can see that that's, that's normal. There's a lot going on here and not a lot of space to work in. Oops, and I'm just entering each loop from behind.
it. Step back, admire your work before taking it off the loom. If you want to add fringe, I recommend doing that now.